Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and here are some royalty romance recommendations. <laughs> So all of these books on this list, these 10 books um, and series, um, all have some sort of royalty aspect to it. One of the characters in the romance is royalty. They're a king, queen, prince, princess, you name it. Um, some of them are even in a fantasy land, um, some of them are real life, but they are all royalty for sure. So let's just dive right on into my recommendations. I think I'm going to start out with all of the series that I have on this list. So the first series that I'm going to be talking about is probably my favorite royalty romance series books ever and that is the Royally series by Emma Chase. The first one being Royally Screwed, the second one being Royally Matched, one of my favorite books of all time, and then we have Royally Endowed, and then lastly we have Royally Yours. Um, I love these books so much. They all um, revolve around the secret, um, not secret, sorry, this made up country called, um, I forget, what is it? Wesco. It's called Wesco. Um, so this first book is about, um, what's his name? Nicholas. He is crown prince of Wesco, going to be inheriting the throne and everything. And the second one is about, um, his brother who is a prince and his romance. Um, he is doing a Bachelor Royal Edition. I love this book so much. Uh, this one is about one of the heroines from the other books, her sister and the bodyguard. And then this one is all about like the queen that you see, like the older old woman queen that you see in this series. This goes back in time and tells the story of her amazing lifelong romance. I love these books with all of my heart and I just I would love them so much and I like found the royalty aspect in here to be just like so authentic and easygoing and I honestly thought that Wesco was a real country you know it's kind of like Genovia in that sense um <laughs> so these are super duper fun and I totally recommend them. Next I have the Nordic Royal series by Karina Halley the first one being a Swedish prince so basically each book is about a royalty a part of some countries in Europe so these are the books in the series we have a Swedish prince um, is book number one and that is about the prince of Sweden and then book number two is the world heir which I believe is the king of Denmark or the future king of Denmark sorry and then book number three is a Nordic king and I believe he is the king of Norway and then the royal rogue book number four is um, about the prince of Monaco so uh, book number three is definitely my favorite in the series I love that one so much and I feel like it's everybody else's and so our hero here he is the king of Norway and um, he is a widower his wife recently died or died a couple years ago and he has two daughters and he's looking for a nanny for them and so our heroine comes to be the nanny for these two little girls and right when he she like walks into the interviewing room he says no because he is super attracted to her um but his daughters end up seeing her meeting her and falls in love with her and he's has he can't do anything else but hire her because his daughters love her so much and so it is an age gap forbidden romance between the um king of norway and his children's nanny i love that book so much one of my favorite romance books of all time. I feel like it's one of everybody's favorite romance books of all time if you've read it. It's totally worth it. You don't need to read the other ones in the series beforehand. I read book number one and book number two after I read this one. I read the book number three first. Nothing was missing at all. If you want to read book number four, I recommend reading Nordic King first because it's about the king's sister and so you like meet her in book number three and everything. So I love this series so much and like Oh, so, so, so spoon worthy. So then we have um, the Zodiac Queen series by Gemma James. Now this series is definitely like dark, taboo, not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. I know that. Um, these aren't my favorite books in the world, but they do have a very interesting royalty aspect to it. So this first book, they're all like little novellas that all correlate to one another. The first book is called Aries. And um, our heroine, she's a princess of a neighboring land and she gets put in a contract by her uncle when she's young that once she turns of age, she will be put on the Zodiac Island and she has to do this um, thing once a month where she will go to the um, leader of that certain Zodiac once a month. She's basically owned by the leader of that Zodiac and he can do whatever he wants to her. <laughs> um, and so the first book is about Aries. And so for a month, she belongs to the leader of this island. Like the island is like separated into like levels or like sections where like each one is based off of your Zodiac sign. And so the leader of Aries like owns her for a month and there's consent things in here, non-consent things in here. It, it It's pretty wild. I've read up to book three because 
I think that's the bind up three. I this is the free bind up that I got had the first three books in it. It's pretty wild, but she is a princess in here, and that plays a part in the story. Again, it's not gonna be for everybody, so if that does not float your boat, if that's okay, don't pick it up. <laughs> Next, I have King Sized by Jessica Kane. I love this book so much. This is a little novella, and this is part of her like burly men series i think that's what it's called or like bigger men series and they don't go together like at all like the first couple books in the series are like contemporary romances and this one is like a medieval fantasy not like fantasy medieval romance this book starts out with our heroine and she is um i believe like 18 and her parents just died and so she is the queen overnight and our hero is one of her many bodyguards that stand outside her room to make sure that she is safe. And our hero is way older than her, there's an age gap here. And our hero was first a blacksmith, like he didn't used to be a bodyguard for the um, princess, but then one day I think he like sees her in a parade one day and is like, she is beautiful and amazing and is going to be an amazing queen. I want to dedicate my life to protecting this woman. And so um, he enlists to be a guard and so he's a bo bodyguard for her. He's never spoken to her ever. She does not notice him. And then the day that her parents die, like he hears her crying, like in her room, like sobbing. Nobody's there to console her. She doesn't have any friends. Like, like she's just basically alone. And she's, he's, he's like, is nobody gonna go comfort this woman who's like breaking down in tears? And so he goes in there and comforts her and like, she starts to like notice him and realize who this man is and like fall for this guard of hers and it is one of my favorite novellas of all time this romance is just amazing and spoon worthy and just like <laughs> so good and she like she uses her like queenly queenly powers i don't know if that's the word he uses her like authoritative like powers as being queen to like request that he be her like sole guard and so they can have alone time together and nobody can know about it and it's pretty good. <laughs> then we have Theirs for the Night by Katie Robert. This is the only book that I've read in this series, so I don't really know how the rest of the series goes along with it, um, but this is a short little novella. I think it's free. It's always free on Amazon. And so our heroine, she goes to this bar one night with her friends, and she comes across these two guys, and they're both interested in her. They're both interested in her. They're friends, and all three of them get together. Little does she know that one of those men may or may not be... Um, like royalty <laughs> um and so uh, i've only read book number one it's pretty wild pretty steamy really entertaining to read um but i think like the rest of the series gets more into like the royalty aspect in there and how they're gonna figure everything out with one of them being royalty and her not being royalty you know then we have one of my other favorite novellas of all time we have the king's spinster bride by ruby dixon i love this book so much um so this is a royalty romance set in a fantasy land our heroine is like um the princess to this land and um when she's like young i think she's like 16 um at the beginning of the book and her father ends up kidnapping the son of the cyclops cyclops don't like look like cyclops like we think of from like percy jackson giant one eye you know cyclops in here are basically they look like humans they just don't have one eye because they offer one of their eyes up to the gods um so they're called cyclops so her father ends up kidnapping the king of the cyclops and in retaliation the king of the cyclops comes to conquer his land and to get his son back and so while the country the land is being ransacked and taken over by the cyclops she protects this like little boy like she protects him i think he's like eight or six like she's befriended him throughout all of this and she protects him and makes sure that nobody kills him nobody hurts him in like gratitude of this his father once he kills her father and like conquers the land um tells her that like in, re in reward like he won't kill her but she is in exile like she cannot come back here um and so she has been living in this like convent for the rest of her life and i believe she's like um 30 something now she says 16 years later so she may be in her 30s or 40s i don't really remember um but it is later on in life and our hero is like a, is the king now of this land they're all older now and he needs to find a wife his advisors are telling him to find a wife get married and everything and he's like well i want the woman who saved my life like i want to marry her and so he goes and finds her in this convent and is trying to like convince her to um get married to him and um she's like well, what do you mean i'm so much older than you you can have anybody you want you're gorgeous you're handsome i'm an old spinster maid and he's like are you kidding me i want you like i want you and oh my gosh they obviously like go through this like wedding ritual ceremony because they're like barbarians um there's like this three 
rituals you have to do to like get married in like the cyclops barbarian culture and they are so steamy so amazing <laughs> i love this book so much please read it you don't need to read the other books if you don't want to because the other books are like 600 some pages but this is the novella prequel that's just like everything to me i love it so much one of my favorite books of all time it's making me want to reread it right now. <laughs> then I have The King's Horrible Bride by uh, Katie Wilde. So this is a book that takes place in another like a uh, pretend um, country, kind of like Wesco that I talked about earlier. This one's called Capria. Um, and this is about Maximilian and he is going to be inheriting the throne. And in this land, um, there is this big scientist who's like a billionaire. And this billionaire, he ends up telling Maximilian or showing Maximilian this like invention that he has that can like save the country's economy and all that stuff. And in return, he wants him to marry one of his daughters and so he agrees to this so it's 12 years later after he's agreed to this bargain it's finally time for him to go get victoria victoria is the woman he has been promised to marry also nobody knows about this agreement that they've had only maximilian victoria and victoria's dad who by this point has actually passed away unfortunately but since it's been 12 years and like he still hasn't come to marry her she is convinced that he like doesn't actually want to marry her and so she feels like he's just doing this out of obligation now and like um she's very hesitant and doesn't know why he wants to marry her um and can call it off at any point her father has died at this point and she's just thinking like why does he want to marry me is this all out of obligation i want it to be for love and like he's trying to convince this woman that like yeah this is a part of like a deal that i made with your father but i actually have a real feelings for you so yeah this is a royalty romance he's a prince um or a future king and um they like have to be put in the spotlight and everything because they're going to announce their engagement and stuff and she thinks that he's just pretending but in actuality he is not i found this one super fun to read about and so then i have another katie wilde book we have the midwinter mail order bride so this is about a king and a princess a princess of a different land obviously um so this is about kale the conqueror and he just conquered this land um because the king was evil and it was abusing his people and everything so kale the conqueror came and conquered it. Um, he's quite mean, big and scary, but he's a huge softy inside. And he's ultimately saved these people from a cruel evil man. His advisors go out and send like letters and notifications into the land that like he is looking for a bride, even though Kale is not looking for a bride, but his advisors did that anyway. And so Princess Anya is trying to, um, find a like country of her own. Her parents are quite controlling. She goes to go, um, to this land to go marry kill the conqueror but on her way there i feel like i think she gets like drunk or drugged to where like she can like tell all of her secrets or like she gets so drunk that she like spills her secret of she's actually going to marry kill the conqueror and then she wants to kill him <laughs> so she can have the country all to herself and he's like uh no i want somebody to marry me who actually wants me for me i want somebody to fall in love with i don't want some schemey kind of thing and so um She's like quite offended by this and she's like, I can't believe you don't want to marry me. And he's like, uh, you want to kill me. <laughs> and so no. And so he, this is the story about them like traveling back to her like homeland where she's the princess of. It is a romance between the two of them. This is kind of like a road trip romance, but again, it's in a fantasy land. I only like road trip romances where it's in a fantasy land for some reason. I can't stand contemporary road trip romances. This one was just so fun on their trip back to this land. They slowly start having actual feelings for one another and falling for one another. And um, it was super duper fun. Next, I have Heart of the Fae by Emma Hamm. This is a fantasy romance book and a Beauty and the Beast retelling. So this is about Sorcia and she is a midwife and her father is dying from this plague that has ridden their fantasy land and she's trying to find the cure for it and she goes to this like um i think it's like a witch of the river she asks this witch what she can do to like get this cure and the witch is like i'll give it to you if you go to this um like island and you bring me the exiled prince of this island um and so she goes to this island finds this exiled prince he is a fae he so it's a fae romance also he is a fae who was who is a cast out prince on this misfit island where a bunch of other people have been cast out. He's basically the prince of it because he used to be the prince of the Fae and then he got in a battle, I believe, with his brother. And once he's cut, like his brother ends up cutting him with a sword and geodes and crystals start like growing out of his body. And like to the Fae, like that is grotesque because he doesn't look perfect and pristine and beautiful and handsome. And so he gets cast out and rejected by his people. And so he's now the king of this like, 
other like misfit land and like so it's a beauty and the beast retelling between the two of them when she like gets there i just love this fantasy land i love emma ham's writing style and this is a rose romance that's quite unique to me because he is like a cast out prince you know um but he's also a prince of this like misfit island where other people have been cast out so i found this one um to be super enjoyable and very unique and lastly we have a recent read of mine we have the royal we by heather cox and jessica morgan now this is a romance written quite a long time ago and i just now picked it up i don't even when was this written this was written maybe i think 2015 so it's been a, a couple years since this has been published william and kate were married in the 2000s and so this is a uh reimagining and kind of like um yeah reimagining is the right word of william and kate and their love story this is not about william and kate the first part of this book is very similar to their romance i've watched documentaries about them way back when i was obsessed with the royal wedding way back when because i like my i remember my teacher in middle school she like stopped class and we ended class for the day and all we did was watch the royal wedding for class <laughs> it was super fun um but i was obsessed with them the beginning is very much reminiscent of william and kate and their ro romance story sorry and their romance story and how they like got together and how they were in college and how they met each other in college and everything and so this deals with a lot with like press issues like i know that they've dealt with recently and i finished reading this book the day that the oprah winfrey interview came out and i was like dang <laughs> I did not know that was coming out and I just read this book and I was like dang that's like too much of a coincidence for me. So overall I really like this one and like if you're wanting a romance story based on like like the royal family like I feel like you'd really like this one. So there you have it those are some royalty romance recommendations for you. I absolutely love this trope. If you love royalty romance books too please leave them down below so I can check them out and read more because I absolutely adore this trope. Anyways thank y'all so so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all!